Hello and welcome back to the Bottom Bins podcast and to our regular Premier League coverage. Uh, today our game for you is Aston Villa versus Fulham and we thought we would cover this one this week because Villa have been on an absolute tour this season and we just haven't got to talk that much about them this year so we'll jump right into the episode. Uh, Connor Villa, 13 wins in a row at home. Um, crazy statistic the they have made Villa Park into an absolute fortress and it doesn't seem like anybody's going to be able to go there and take any sort of points off them at the minute. And look, they have a number of top performers this year, Leon Bailey, Diaby, um, Telemans has looked excellent these last couple of weeks. And of course, Starman Ali Watkins up front. But the revival of the careers of Douglas Louise, John McGinn, Matty Cash even this season as well. And look, to be honest, I can't name a bad Aston Villa player at the minute, Connor. but what do you think it largely comes down to? Is it the manager? Is it the players? What are you attributing Villa's success to this season? I think it's just a mixture of both. The fans as well at home, they're just unbelievable. Uh, Emery said that when he started. It was like, we need to get a good relationship with the fans, and they've definitely done that. They've been sensational this season. Um, you know, as you said, Ollie Watkins has been one of the best strikers in the Premier League. Um, again, a player that I questioned would he be starting in this team, but he has thrived in this team. Douglas Louise as well has been brilliant. Uh, and then, you know, as you said, Diaby, great signing. Torres is a, at the back too, I think I questioned him as well. They lost their first game away to Newcastle, I think it was 5 or 6-1. And I, I thought, the way they play as well, they play with this high line, uh, I was like, oh, they have no chance this season, but They've been absolutely brilliant, uh, especially at home. As you said, 13 Premier League wins in a row. That is mental. Um, the Orbis suspect on the road, but they're, they're just so good to watch as well. And, you know, now when you see them play the likes of Fulham, uh, you just guaranteed win. You're like, they're not going to lose. They're at home. They're going to get the victory here. And Emery, you know, he had a rough time of it at Arsenal, but he's just he's just made fellas since he's came in. He's one of the best records in the Premier League and just made them into a really exciting team. The press, the high line, you know, they've one of the best keepers of the best keeper in the world, according to the Ballon d'Or or according to the Ballon d'Or, yeah, um, according to FIFA. So, you know, and they're missing players as well. You know, they lost Mings as, you know, he got injured and, you know, they're like, that's a big miss. There's, there's their captain gone and they're still winning games comfortably. So full credit to Villa and, they're just going to keep getting better and better. It's just going to be can the stiff the player stiff it because if you look at their bench, it is not very strong. You look at Callum Chambers there, players they got it, 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 it does get rough. So if the stiff if the player stiff it, there's no there's no doubt they can challenge in Europe or you know in Europe obviously they're in Europe in the Conference League and then challenge for the top spots, maybe even Champions League. Yeah, you just you never know, you never know. And look, I agree with you, Connor. I think you know they've had no Moreno either this season and like he was phenomenal when he signed last January and he's been unavailable but I think he's due to come back now after this international break so it's interesting to see whether Digne drops straight out of the side because I think he's actually sort of revived his Villa career a bit this season um so it'll be interesting to see what Emery does there and look I completely agree the style of play that the play it's so exciting and you know I Emery was <laughs> Emery has sort of adopted his style a bit because he was predominantly a defensive coach and now we're seeing his team attack with such ferocity. And I think when you have the caliber of player like Diaby and Watkins, it probably is a wee bit more easier to be a bit more expansive. And then, you know, you've got Bailey. I know if I'm a fullback and, and I'm looking around 75 minutes, I've, I've maybe I've locked up Diaby and then I see Leon Bailey coming on. You just know you're in for a tired 15, 20 minutes. Like, so it's not fun. So so some, some of the players that they have even in rotation at Villa is absolutely incredible. Oren, Ollie Watkins has absolutely banged this season, scoring goals left, right and centre. It just seems as though every time he plays at Villa Park, he's guaranteed a goal. How would you assess the Englishman's start to the season so far? Do you know what? Yes, and I'm not trying to be negative whatsoever. I think he's been fantastic, but I do think he could be better. Do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's games there last week. The one was a four nil or something than the one, and he didn't even score. Um, I know he scored in the last game, but I think it was two weeks ago or something. The the, the one by a big enough margin, he didn't score. Um, but he's influential in all the games. Um, I really like Ollie Watkins. I think he's of a better level than Aston Villa as well, which is. Difficult to say because, you know, Villa are very much a European contending side at the minute. And, uh, you know, we've seen Emery's 
real revival of Aston Villa last season. Like it, it is crazy to think that at the start of last season they were managed by Steven Gerrard and you know in the relegation zone for so many weeks. Um, you wouldn't think it's the same team at all with predominantly the same players. Um, but as you say, the likes of Diaby and, and Bailey, they're really helping, not just Emery, but they're helping Ollie Watkins. You know, them them tricky wingers are, are getting into the areas and, you know, it's taking a lot of pressure off Ollie Watkins because when he originally signed from Brantford and, you know, he was getting a lot of goals or r- rather more goals than Villa were expecting up front, you know, he was very much doing the dog work himself and getting all the goals himself and doing all that work in and around the box. However, now he's got the support, he's got you know, the midfield and the likes of Douglas Ruiz, the quality there that's doing all that gritty work for him. And he's just having to put the ball in the net, which is, you know, ultimately what he's best at. And, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if in the summer he does get a big move. And, you know, I'd, unfortunately, I could see him going to City and, and playing second field to, to um, Erling Holland, especially if Julian Alvarez goes to Real Madrid. Um, but a big move for Ollie Watkins is definitely on the cards. But who knows, you know, as, as, as Dorman says... Villa could be challenging for the Champions League. Our Champions League spaces are up. And there's a real possibility of them winning a European competition this season. We said that at the end of last season. If West Ham can win that fucking cup, Aston Villa can definitely win it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it's exciting times for Villa fans. And exactly, Orrin, with, with a cup manager too, you know, there's absolutely no reason why they couldn't progress on now and and possibly win the the conference league and it would be be massive for a club like Villa to to go on and and win that competition the, I think the boost it would give the squad to go and do something like that would be absolutely amazing and look I mean the same Moussa Diaby in the summer and he's he's a player we're going to talk a little bit about here but you know there was a lot of top teams after Moussa Diaby you know he was PSG's first choice before Ousmane Dembele eventually signed uh, Juventus were interested as well Chelsea were also interested but I mean Chelsea are fucking interested in every winger in world football if we're being completely honest but there were some top top teams in there that were after him and you know he's, he chose Aston Villa um, and he said in his opening interview it was the manager's words that convinced him to go to Aston Villa shows you the pull that Unai Emery has but Connor he's come in to the Premier League um he, he was Leverkusen's main player um over the last number of years their main goal getter their main creator and he's come into the Premier League the best league in the world the hardest league in the world and really he's 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 settled better than most could have believed definitely um he's only like 24 years of age brilliant signing um really exciting player as you said uh, three goals, three assists this year, and you know it's a player that you know you need nowadays. You need that you know that bit of pace. Uh, can get out of get out of his man, and it's just just a top player. And you know the signings by Emery have been really really good. Um, Pat Torres as well at the back has been very good. A player that I actually thought could struggle. Um, but again he was linked to Bayern Munich and teams like that. And Emery just has this pull because they know that they're going to be coached by a top, top manager. And as you said, they play really good football, which is what they didn't do at Arsenal. Maybe he didn't, you know, trust the players at Arsenal, but now he knows he has his own team, um, his own players. And even like some players like Mings and McGinn, as you said, McGinn has been sensational. I've seen he's got eight goal involvements in 19 games. It's something that, something that he's brought to Villa now that he can get, you know, involved in the goals. Douglas Louise is another player that can score goals. Like, that's what the they've brought. You know these, you know defensive mids can score goals, and that can change a team, as you said as well. Ollie Watkins, what what a player! And uh, again, what Owen said, he, he can he's just going to get better. And I I don't know if he'll move or not because do you know what Villa are an exciting team and they have a top top manager in Emery, and I can only see them getting better. They have a bit of money and they have a manager that has a great pull and can get top class players. Yeah, he absolutely can. He absolutely can, and, and he is proven that. And it'll be interesting to see whether, you know, if they go into January, maybe sitting in, in fifth or sixth, do they maybe want to dip back into the market in January and maybe try and sign somebody that can maybe push them on to Champions League places? Because I, I really, in, in my opinion, I, I don't think Champions League places are, are that much out of the realm for Aston Villa this season. I, I, I do believe the brand of football that they play and the, the, the quality that they have, and especially in their starting 11, could be enough to get them over the line. Now, Obviously, they're going to have to beat a number of top teams to 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 get into those spaces. But I, you know, if if the Champions League is the top five in England this year, you know, 
you never know. You never know. They might just sneak in there at fifth. Or and the one thing we'll always come back to you with, and I feel like we, we mention this every time we talk about Aston Villa, but it was right from the very first episode, or, or no, maybe not the first episode. I think it was like the second or the third episode of the Bottom Bins podcast. One of your one of your more famous um, opinions of the week was that Unai Emery would not succeed at Aston Villa, and by no means were you talking about what he would do with them in the in the league. You were very specific that it was bringing some sort of cup success, or or maybe even qualification for the Champions League um, in, into Aston Villa. Has your opinion from a year ago swayed at all? Because believe it or not, boys, we're actually a year at doing this. <laughs> yeah, seen that. A year on the 11th or something, 11th of November or something. 11th of November, yeah. Yeah, no, look, it has. It's changed. It's changed, of course. Um, I'd be stupid to say it hasn't changed, and I'm not ashamed to say that it's changed. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. There, you know, there was basis behind my opinion at, the, at that time. You know, Villa were sitting 17th in the league, and my idea of success was, you know, getting some sort of silverware for Aston Villa in, in the near future, and if we're being honest, it didn't look possible, Unai Emery or not, Jose Mourinho, you know, Pep Guardiola, it doesn't matter who was there, it, it, to me it didn't look possible in, in that moment in time, and I think for a lot of football fans it didn't look possible as well, by no by no means when I said that opinion was a criticising the calibre of manager that Aston Villa had brought in, or criticising the Aston Villa squad, because you know, on paper Aston Villa have always had a very strong squad, Do you know, they've always had players that have went on to go to the big teams and stuff like that there. So by no means when I said that was a disparage in the, the work that Villa had done or anything like that there. I did at the time think that they wouldn't succeed. However, you know, the job that Unai Emery has done cannot go unnoticed. Um, bringing them from literal relegation zone to European places and now in a European competition, which they have a real possibility of winning this season. And I said that at the end of last season as well. And, you know, I said it about ten, and five minutes ago, if West Ham can win that competition, fucking anyone can win that. Or my City Eagles under 13s can win that competition if West Ham can win that competition. You know Absolutely what I mean? Not. Absolutely. So, Aston Villa under Rune Emery, who is a proven cup winner, you know, he, he can, he, he's won the Europa League, I don't know how many times it may as well be named after him. His success at Villarreal was absolutely phenomenal. And that's a testament to him as a manager and that shows his pull as well. You know, Dorman was saying there about Pau Torres. Pau Torres was linked to Bayern Munich. He was linked to PSG. He was linked to Manchester United, who were all in need of centre-backs. You know, and all them three clubs did end up getting different centre-backs. But apart from Man United, we got fucking Johnny Evans. But, you know, Pau Torres was linked to them big major clubs. But, you know, he... He was used to the style of Unai Emery. He wanted to adapt himself in the Premier League. He wanted to try that experience. And, you know, Aston Villa playing in European football, a European competition, also brought that pull as well. So, yeah, but of course my opinion's changed. Um, you know, there's a real possibility for Aston Villa in, in, in Europe. And, you know, the FA Cup and stuff as well. Aston Villa, they're no pushover team. Do you know what I mean? For anybody, you know... Steady struggle against Aston Villa. They're they're a bogey team for a lot of teams as well. Um, but yeah, no. It, in terms of my opinion, yeah, it's de- it's definitely changed. And you know, full credit to Aston Villa and definitely full credit to Unai Emery. Yeah, agreed, Orn. Agreed. They are definitely a handful for for a lot of teams, and they will cause teams a lot of a lot of trouble this season, to be honest. But lads, just to to move it then to the flip side of this game. Um, obviously Villa running out three one winners against Fulham here, but. You know, if we just touch on Fulham, um, Connor, when when we did our Man United and Fulham episode last week, um, we maybe spoke on Fulham for about thirty seconds in total. So we'll give them their due in this episode. Um, boys, I, I'll not lie. Um, I'm really struggling to see anything with Fulham. I think the Fulham we grew accustomed to seeing last season is well and truly out the window at the minute. I think this Fulham side without Mitrovic, they just don't look like they're going to score goals. They don't look like they're even creating underperformances from William, no man or Solomon um, there to come off the bench for them anymore either. I don't think Paulinho has really been at his best this season either, to be completely honest. Connor, can they really be considered this early on to be relegation candidates? I don't think so, just for the fact that we'll have Sheffield United, Luton and, um, you know, Bournemouth in the league. And obviously, you know, 
I just, I just think they're too good to go down, to be honest. I think, you know, I think we spoke, when we did speak about them last week, it is crazy we're talking about Fulham two weeks in a row. Um, when we did talk about them last week, uh, it was all negative. And again, after that performance, it's all negative. Because as you said, Plenia, who wanted the move to Bayern, has not been as you know good this season. I think he scored once, maybe. He did score a big goal, maybe against Brighton. But he could have been sent off because he elbowed um, a Brighton player in the head. But as you said, yeah, Last season, we couldn't believe what they were doing. That like Tim Ream and centre back and things like that, and they're kind of getting found out now. Um, you know, Robinson had no goal. Leno's a top keeper. Jimenez did get a goal. Got to give him credit, but he's not a he's not a top striker anymore. Um, Willian was playing unbelievable. Um, I think a player we we'll have to mention though is Pereira. You know, last season he was incredible, but this season he is his level has definitely dipped, and he was scoring goals at a good pace last year, and this season he has not done it, and. I think that drop off with coinciding with losing Mitrovic and uh, Solomon, uh, I think it's just cost them big time. But I think that they're just a bit too good to go down. They have a good manager as well, Marco Silva, and also the quality of the Premier League at the lower end. I think they're just a bit better than that. But I think they definitely overachieved last year, and I think they're just going to be one of them sides. They're going to be about fourteenth, fifteenth, um, which is okay for Fulham, but. Uh, where do they go from here is going to be the question because I think Marco Silva could maybe he was uh, linked away in the summer as well to Saudi he might uh, take that opportunity this summer yeah he could well do he could well do to be honest just depending on where Fulham look like they're going to be as a football club and you know I think a lot of Fulham fans are realists out there and um, they really are especially um, a guy on Football Daily that I love to watch is uh, a guy called Henry Hill um, he's an excellent journalist and he's a massive Fulham fan and you know his expectation is just very much try and stay in the Premier League you know uh, like the, the, the investment isn't the same at Fulham as what it might be at other Premier League sites. So staying in the league probably is just their 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 only priority at this stage in time. Um, Oren, just uh, touching on what Connor said there about Raul Jimenez, that's his first goal in 18 months. Um, and really what you would say is, look, I know Fulham didn't, didn't win the game, but that's a nice personal story for a player like Jimenez who obviously suffered such a terrible injury just a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, ach, look, it is. It is. It's a nice. It's nice for him. However, you know, and I, I'll, it's difficult because I, I always rated Raúl Jiménez, and you know, I watched your podcast last week and stuff, and you know, I very much agreed with what Connor said, and I, I remember at the time thinking that Raúl Jiménez for five point five million was a shrewd piece of business for Fulham. Um, but you know, Fulham fans and Fulham themselves didn't expect Raúl Jiménez to be their starting striker. Um. Yes, he, he, he proved it in the Premier League with Wolves, but obviously that was a life-changing injury, uh, injury that he occurred with his head. And you know, in terms of his career, it, it, he hasn't been the same since. So yes, it's brilliant that he's got a goal. However, you know, we've watched Raúl Jiménez not just for Fulham, but even in the latter end of last season and stuff playing for Wolves. It's not like he hasn't had chances. Do you know what I mean? He, he's still a striker. He's still a professional footballer. He's obviously good enough to be starting in the Premier League. So. Yes, and by no means am I saying this injury had no effect on him. It was fucking career changing for him. However, he still should be scoring more than he has done. All right, um, but yeah, as as you have said, and as Connor really alluded to, you know, I very much agree with everything Connor said there, and I'm glad he mentioned about you know Marco Silva's um, proposed move to Saudi in the summer. I think that changed Fulham's perspective entirely for the season. You know, it was. Right, and we were two weeks, two game weeks into the Premier League, near enough before Marco Silva finally came out and was like, I'm absolutely not going to Saudi. You know, he rejected two approaches, but Fabrizio kept saying, oh, if they offer him 40 million a year, he might go on, whatever. And then he came out and was like, no, I'm not going. Um, and it looked like, you know, Fulham could really bounce on from there, kick on from there. But, you know, the influence of Tim Ream and Andres Pereira, as Connor said, hasn't been there this year. Um, and you know, obviously, the goals and Alexander Mitrovic. Um, so, you know, if I was a Fulham fan, I'd be thinking, Tony Callan, get your finger out, and, and you need, you know, you really need to start spending in January if you have any sort of, uh, you know, they're going to stay in the Premier League. I'm not, I, I don't think they'll get relegated because, as Connor said, you know, Burnley, uh, Sheffield United, Luton, well, Luton, Luton have a bit, but you know, teams like that there are worse than Fulham. But Tony Callan needs to be dipping into the market. He needs to be looking at Europe um, because Fulham's a huge side and it's not like he hasn't got the money sure he's got AEW coming back to Wembley for God's sake 
is where he's got the money. But it's just, I think Fulham are too commercial sometimes. They look at player names rather than what's best for the team. Adama Traore did not make sense to go to Fulham on a free transfer. And they just looked at him and were like, Adama Traore is big PSA. And he's, he's done it in the Premier League for about two months. And they were like, free transfer, let's get him. The thought Raul Jimenez would be back to his best if he was playing around with Adama Traore. That's the way they signed him. You know, Andres Pereira, at the time, didn't look like a good signing. Turned out to be decent. Joe Polina was an excellent signing. It's not working out as well because his head's away. I think he'll go in January as well. And if he goes in January, who do they bring in there? Because, yes, he hasn't been to the quality that he was last year. Everybody can see that. However, he is still a special, special footballer. And to replace that quality in a team like Fulham, who actually rely on him so much, will be very, very difficult. And it could be a very, very difficult six months after January, unless they spend and invest heavily. Yeah, completely agreed. Completely agreed. And obviously with MJF's contract coming up now um, in January 2024, <laughs> I'm sure all the money will be focused on trying to retain oh, the AW really World that. Champion. The World Champion. Opposed, absolutely going to happen. As opposed to signing football players. <laughs> but you know what, honest. Connor, you know what? That's a joke, but it's actual fact. Yeah. It's genuine yeah. fact. Was that there a, is a joke. not meant to be on AEW or something? That was going around, wasn't I, it? Wasn't that's why the bottom really was really on AEW. Why, sure. <laughs> why not? Crazy, crazy boys, isn't it? Like, it's crazy that a wrestling company dictates how a team in the Premier League does. Like, <laughs> well, look, and on that, uh, on that little bit of pop culture for you there, folks, you see, it's not just football you get here, it's wrestling news as well. Um, but on that note, um, Please go and give us a follow at Bottom Bends Pod, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. We're also on Facebook now, the Bottom Bends Podcast. So if you want to head over there, give us a like and a follow on that platform as well. And as always, thank you for listening and keep it Bottom Bends. Keep it Bottom Bends. Bottom bins.